was beginning to think you two had got lost. I called in at Trisha's. Why? Asked her to babysit tonight. Well, I didn't think it'd be very fair to ask Ashley, given the circumstances. You're not kidding. You're still keen, then, going out on the Raz with Milado and his mate? Well, shouldn't I be? No, no, it's just after Ashley's little bombshell. After Ashley's little bombshell, I could do with a night out. One evening away from all the angst. Well? Just left a bit, just an inch. Perfect. We've got ourselves a cafe. You have? <laughs> all yours, remember? I could have done it without you, both of you. And I just want to say how much I appreciate all the hours you've put in this weekend. Worth all the hard work in the end. Um, excuse me, I was looking for a cafe, but I, I seem to have wandered into this rather classy patissier bar instead. <laughs> it looks good, doesn't it? Not bad at all. <laughs> OK, Viv, <clears throat> this is your vegetarian and this is the rest, OK? Oh, it's really good of you, Marlon. Well, just this once, eh, for the grand inauguration. I'll bring the quail's eggs over later. Right. Quail's eggs? Yeah, well, I'm not having Gloria Weaver looking down her nose at me on my own grand opening, no. This is going to be the day I show the whole village what Viv Hope and her family can really do. Well, all the best for it, anyway. Thanks, Marlon. It's funny, it takes me back, actually. I remember the day we opened my place the first time. Very exciting. Hope it all goes as well for you. See you. Come now, my love. We all know this is a different situation. Marlon, great chef, but he's no businessman. Whereas you, my little munchkin. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be great, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, they were the ones on the tequila slammers all night. Uh, oh. Yuck. Well, what the hell's happened here? Your sister. That's what you get when you leave a house too long. Infestation by teenagers. Oh, well, at least mice would have eaten all the food. Oh. Bit of a come down after the last couple of weeks, though, isn't it? You just wait till I get my hands on Donna. Well, I mean, one minute they're back together again, next minute they're getting divorced. I'm surprised you didn't install a revolving door at that vicarage. <laughs> well, if you ask me, it were on the cards as soon as he stopped trusting her. Death of any relationship, that, eh, man? All right, Letitia, I've said I'm sorry. Oh, we're not starting on this again, are we? No one thinks you're a thief, OK, Letitia? Yeah, well, come on. Give us your mugs. I'll get them rinsed. So can we put this behind us now? I suppose so. Good, cos I need some keep off you. All oh, right. Is that why I got the apology? No, but, I mean, we've got bills to pay. And our Danny's come up with sweet Fanny Arkwright, as usual, this week. Surprise, surprise. So? Well, seen as I'm trusted... A bit flush, aren't we? And? I'm just saying... Yes, you're right, Gloria. I enjoy paying good money for my staff to sit around doing nothing. We were just about to go back inside. Come on. Sorry, you see? Just a few ideas regarding this afternoon. Think sound bites, Eric. Keep it short and sweet. We don't want to come across as pompous, do we? No, <laughs> certainly wouldn't help matters. <laughs> Hang on. You don't think that No, I'll... of course I don't. I simply mean we need to cultivate your man of the people image. That's gentleman of the people, obviously. Oh! <laughs> obviously. Thank you. So what happened to the spring wedding, then? Oh, if we've, we've neither of us had a chance to organise anything. We think it'll probably be in September now. Oh. Don't let him keep putting it off. Oh, it's not just Paddy. Lost! It's a big day for him. There. That's my lunch sorted. Actually, I thought you might come over at Woolly with me. Emily, I can't, can I? Not after Friday. Bob, love! Bob! Can you come down and give us a hand? Actually, that's why I thought you should go over there. What? Oh, uh, no. No, I don't think so. You've got to apologise sometime. It's too soon. What happened between you and your dad wasn't Bernice's fault. You said so yourself. Oh! I know that. But... So come on. 
The situation with your dad's bad enough without this to make it worse. Hi. Hi, nearly ready. Thanks. I'll bring her back at the usual time, then. Yeah, um, Trisha will be here to babysit. Oh, yes? Yeah, there was something I wanted to talk to you about. Go on. Well, um, the thing is, me and Mum have been asked out tonight um, by two blokes and we've said that we'd go. Yes, so I've heard from Viv. Oh. Oh, no. And what did you hear about it from me? Not via the local grapevine. That's why I'm telling you now. Oh, that's interesting, because that implies that I've got some sort of interest in what you do. Or, to be more precise, that I'm supposed to care. Oh, to be so silly. I'm not being silly, Bernice. The point of the divorce is so we can make a clean break, be free of each other. That'll be a little hard if you insist on updating me about your love life, won't it? I'll come back later. No, Marlon, I'm just leaving. Have a nice evening. I'm guessing that was a conversation that could have gone better. Mark? Oh. Hiya. You made me jump. What, what are you doing here? Um, hey, you. I didn't think you'd be in today. So, how was your holidays? Yeah, it was fine, thanks. Len, can I have a word, please? Yeah, yes you can. Len, what the hell's going on? I specifically told you not to do anything about Mark working it until I got back. Well, yeah, you, you hold your horses. I haven't. Well, then why is he in my garage after his elbows in Greece, huh? I said he could come down and help out, that's all. He's not getting paid. Anyway, now you're back, we could talk about giving him a job, can't oh, we? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. What is it to wait for? We need somebody. He's a good mechanic. He'll pay him peanuts and you know him. Yeah, I know that he's just got out of the nick. I never thought you'd be somebody who would hold that against him. No, I don't, but... It's, it... He's not some old lag. So what's the problem? It's just... Coppers, probation officers wandering around the place. It's not good for business. They won't, son. I promise you. He's made a clean break. I'm not happy about it. Oh, come on. You've got my word on this. That's got to be good for summers. Well, you'll time to leave if you want to. He better be as good as you say he is. He is, straight up. Does that mean he can stay? He's on trial. I'm not promising anything. Music on, let's get some atmosphere going. May I have the pleasure? No, I've got to get on. Well, go on. It's not every day I get the chance to mambo with the region's most successful restaurateur. <laughs> it is going to be a success, though, isn't it? Oh, of course it is. Are you ready? No, Bob. <gasps> Too late. And again. Penny for him. Oh, sorry. Uh, miles away. Rude of me. Oh, it's all right. You know I won't mind. So, are those two on or off? Who knows? Mm, well, I hope she watches herself, that's all. Well, she says she knows what she's doing. Don't some women go for dodgy men? You see, me, if I could put a million miles between me and Ray Mullen, it'd still be too close, if you know what I mean. I mean, not that he's my type, anyway. No? No. I prefer my men a bit more honest. You know, a bloke that doesn't like to collect people, if you see what I mean. Like Ray Mullen does? Yeah. Yeah. I like a bloke who stayed straightforward in spite of what life's thrown at him. Oh, I? Well, do you know anyone like that? No, not really. Aye, right, come on, you've kept me in suspense long enough. Oh, I've already told you. I have to clear it with Diane first. What's all this? It's the brush off. She reckons she might be needed here tomorrow evening. Surely you can spare her for one night, Diane. Actually, I'm not sure. Will you come and have a look at the rotor with this pet? Oh, yeah, sure. Are you sure they won't need you? Maybe we should go back. Can't do anything till Mr. Ops fix the electrics. Come on, stop trying to put it off. Well, well, well. I didn't expect to see you in here today. Well, I won't. Nicholas got something to say to you, Bernice. Oh, yes. Well? I'm sorry about what happened on Friday. It wasn't you I was angry with, it was Dad. Oh, and that gives you the right to hit me, does it? No. I just lashed out. I shouldn't have done it, and I'm sorry, that's all. 
Oh, all right then. But try and keep your temper in future, eh? If you don't want to go, then don't go. But I do, sort of. Then what? Well, you know what. Yeah, well, there's no guarantee with any bloke, is there? If he's going to muck you about, he's going to muck you about. The risk goes with the territory. Mm, that's true enough. I'll tell you what. Why don't you give him one more chance, and if he still messes you around, call it quits. Yeah. What have I got to lose? Look, I can't find anything wrong. Not with the fuse box, anyway. I'll murder those builders. If I ever see them again, so help me... Don't I... panic. Don't panic. I've got the local media coming with Eric Pollard and Gloria Weaver. I've got the entire village queuing up to see me fail. And I've got my grand opening in the dark. What do you mean, don't panic? Knock, knock. Hey, it looks good in here, doesn't it? Almost professional. What do you want? Come to pick up our tools. <clears throat> now, you didn't think we were going to leave them here and all, did you? Look, you're going to help. The electrics have gone. Oh, yeah? We've got no power. We're supposed to be opening at one. Yeah, Mrs Hope, we don't work for nothing now. I've told you that before, haven't I? So, <clears throat> if you'll excuse us. Oh, please, look, I am begging you. You know, we could at least try and find out what's wrong. Good deed for the day and all that. You must be joking. You know how much money she owes us? Well, it's the big day. And we'll never get the money back if the business goes under, will we? You're going soft, you are. OK, Mrs Hope, we'll help you out. But listen, this is still an unresolved dispute, OK? Thank you. Lemon thief. You can talk. Oh, don't. I've had enough of that for my mum. Oh, dear. She's been giving you an hard time, has she? Well, she's apologised, but it's obvious what she really thinks. So? It's true, isn't it? In case of the prime suspect being the culprit, isn't it? Yeah, but... But what? I only took from someone that could afford it in the first place. Oh, yeah. I right. did! Now, if she knew how hard it was being a single mum, then she wouldn't be grudging, man. <laughs> you know... You take the word hypocrite to an all you level you do. Kane, it's all right. I'm flattered. Shows you're learning. Now, give us one of them books. No way, get out! Oh, well, there's your problem, Mrs. Hope. But what is it? That is your Jules Oscillator. And it's tripped out. Which is very unusual. What's a Jules oscillator when it's at home? It's like a backup fuse box. They put them in old places like this in the 60s. Mm. Very rare for them to go, but this one has. Yeah, but... Well, no. never mind all that. Can you fix it? Oh, aye. Well, it'll take a few seconds, but uh, now whether we will or not, it's not a matter. What? I'll not waste your time, Mrs Hope, because I can see you've just got ten minutes before the opening. Now, you write a check out for the money you owe us. Well, we'll see what we can do. Otherwise... I've got a very important meeting across the road with a large pint. Done. See to that, Sidley. Checkbook, Bob. Viv. Right, you are, boss? Checkbook now. It all sounds a bit sus to me. I don't care what you think, Bob, Pen. Yeah, use mine. Thank you. Uh, for the full amount, plus uh, for the VAT. Look, I really reckon you should just hang on a couple of There's not enough time, Bob. Shut up. Right, and sign with Hope. There you go. Oh, for goodness sake, at least wait until he's got it fixed. Nice music. Pleasure doing business with you. Get a move on, Bob. Come on, we might just make it. I swear to God. All I had to do was stand there, right, while she wrote the checkout. Squidly goes round the back and switches electrics back on. <laughs> Imagine what you can do if you know where someone's junction box is. Yeah. So what is this thing, then? That is the inside of an old television set. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. But you do this a lot, do you? Well, only to that beggars who won't pay up. But still, if I was going to get on my high horse, I'd say it's not very nice, is it? I never said I was nice, did I? I know I shouldn't be. But I'm very pleased to hear it. Hey, yo. I think I'm going to have to chaperone you two tonight, aren't I? Or else who knows what might happen. But we're living up, Squidly. We're living up. <laughs> right. I should head off. Until tomorrow, then. Yeah. So where are you taking me? Oh, it's a surprise. I should warn you, though. Wear outdoorsy clothes. Climbing boots, comeback gear, you know the sort of thing. And I should warn you that I expect to wear a little black number that I've been saving for somewhere very posh. OK. We'll go with your idea. See ya. 
So, uh, what do you think? It's very impressive. Yeah, it's really nice. I might come and eat in here as long as uh, food in tour was this posh. Have you had some sort of electrical hiccup? Yeah, yeah. How do you know that? I saw sitting outside working on the junction box. Of course. Good afternoon. You have a table for us, I believe. Eric! <coughs> Councillor Pollard, Gloria, please come this uh, way. We brought a few friends of ours from the media. That's agreed. I should perhaps mention they're looking upon this as a bit of a freebie. You mean I've got to feed that lot for nothing? Why else do you think so many of them came? <laughs> Take a seat. Gotta see if you're okay. To be honest, Marlon, I'm quite a long way from okay. At least I was until I forced myself to make a decision. Now I'm not so bad. Tea? Please. Ashley, I know it must be hard for you. Contending with Benice seeing other men? Yeah, well, I've had easier times in my life, I must say. But there we are. That's life. It'll get better. Believe me. You think? Ashley. You know, looking back, I don't know why I didn't let the damn marriage end sooner. I mean, I was never going to be good enough for Benice, was I? And now look at me. I can't go anywhere without her life impacting on mine, without becoming a little satellite around the world of Benice. No, look, listen. The important thing to remember through all this is, is no matter what happens, OK, you've still got your dignity. I have? Well, well maybe not your dignity, but your will to live, right? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So I came round, really, see if I could make you laugh. Thanks. What you could do with it. Still doesn't change the problem, though, does it? You could just have easily have had a brew at home, Grandad. Right? There you There's just other places I'd rather be. That's all. Well, why? Hiya, Mark. Managed to lower yourself enough to come in, then? That's one reason. There, I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh, hiya, Donna. Yeah, I had a lovely holiday, thanks. How about you? Well, you can forget that. Why is it you think you can leave my house in such a state? I didn't realise I had, sorry. Well, I've been there for a while. Why didn't you cut up before you moved back here? Look, I said I'm sorry. What more do you want? Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have a little quiet, please. Now, if you'd all like to come outside, Councillor Pollard will officially open this establishment. <laughs> I meant to clean up, honestly, I did. Well, why didn't you? Well, Mum and Bob got back together, so I came back here. And then suddenly there's this place to do up and the cafe to decorate. Right, well, when are you going to come round and help clear up? Look, Scott can't see up to my eyes in it in here. I know, but... Hey! Hey! Got some news. Oh. Nicola quit while we were away. Oh, really? And guess who they're interviewing for her job tomorrow? Me, stupid. Oh, really? All oh, right, that's good. Bit of extra cash, pay for the hoarding bill. Ah. Somebody's having a bad hair day. I've had better. <sighs> and it gives me great pleasure to be here today to witness a bold new venture and, of course, indulge in Mrs Hope's wonderful cuisine. <laughs> I hope we're going to get quail's eggs every day, Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> which reminds me of a story I once heard. Sound bites, Eric. Sound bites. <laughs> which I shall save for another occasion. So, without further ado, I would like to declare this cafe officially open. What happened to Patisserie Vivienne? It's a surprise for you. <laughs> Thanks. Where are the eggs? Ah, gone. A man could only take so much tea. Have this one on me, eh? Oh, that's very kind of you. Oh, aye. Right. Personal service, three pints. What's brought this on? She's in a good mood, I guess. Hmm. Any particular reason? Ray Mullins put a spring into your stuff, doesn't he? I saw you talking before. It's taking me out tomorrow as it happens. Oh. Don't you approve? Oh! No, no, no. It's just that you were uh, moaning about him blowing hot and cold earlier. Yeah, well, I'll change my mind, didn't I, Derry? Woman's prerogative. Pint? Please. Well, I hope you both have a good time. You know, the funny thing is, I sort of feel a sense of release, really. That's a start. How come? Well, if I never was going to be good enough for her, then there's nothing I could have done, is there? It... Ashley, of course not! 
I know it's difficult, but you've got to start working on getting your self-confidence back. Yes, I agree. But that won't happen with the way things are at the moment. You've just got to give it time. I have, Marlon. I think I've given it all the time it's reasonable to expect. Which is why I've come to a decision. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Excuse me. All in all, a great success, I think. A sensation, my love. Viv, about the name. Oh, did you like it? it? Was a sort of thank you present. That's lovely. It's just you seem so keen on Patisserie Vivienne, that's all. Oh, I've changed my mind. Great. You didn't do it to make me come and work here, did you? Of course not. Don't be so paranoid. Right, I'm just nipping to the powder room. You carry on here. Sorry about that. Someone's not sleepy today at all. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so, this decision. Yeah. Well, it's not something I actually want. But I think it's for the best. And I hope everyone will understand. Go on. You see, after today, I realise it's very comforting knowing that I have the support of everyone here. But it's not enough. Meaning? Meaning whatever I do, I still find myself running into Bernice and picking up the pieces for her whenever she wants me to. For as long as I'm here, anyway. I don't see what alternative you've got, Ashley. Not unless you... Oh, no, no, Ashley, you can't. I can't do anything else, Marlon. She's everywhere. In my thoughts all the time. And we both live here. In this tiny place. She keeps making me part of her life. What about Gabby? I'll... do whatever I can to see Gabrielle and be a father to her. But I can't stay here. I'm putting him for a transfer to another parish. I'm leaving the village, Marlon. I've no option. Mm -hmm.